Okay, so today we, we continue with our class of Kitsu Shotanor, today class number 15. And we continue with um, <clears throat> Sefer Shmeras Vashon. <clears throat> and the topic today is the sin of the spies. Okay. The second year of the Jewish uh, Jews sojourn in the wilderness, Moshe sent 12 great men, one from each tribe, to scout out the land of Canaan. Uh, in advance of the Israel conquest of it. Right? When they returned from their mission, 10 of the spies that delivered slanders demoralized the report about the land and the Jews' ability to conquer it. The people accepted the report as a fact and wept throughout the land. So that's his famous story. So we are about, uh, so Hashem said, okay, they uh, looks like they repented after the sin of the golden calf. And uh, now they're ready to go into the, now we built the Mishkan. So now we're ready to go into the, the land of uh, Israel. Right? And, um, and we, we send these 10 spies and they, uh, they for whatever reason, they didn't want to lose their position uh, in, in society and stuff like that, even though they started as a, Righteous people that, but they deliver bad report about the land. Okay, Rabbi Yochanan said the spies returned on the evil uh, on the eve of Tisha B'av. So meaning, meaning not nights of love. The Holy One, blessed be He, said, "You wept in vain. I will establish it. There is that this night for you a time of weeping in full old generation." Tanis twenty-eight B. So basically. Uh, they came and they delivered this bad report, very bad report about the land. And uh, many Jews failed and, and they wept and uh, they, they say, how could you, how could we uh, uh, go into the land if the giants living there and they are so strong and look at the fruits. They brought uh, these fruits back and they were huge and stuff like that. So they basically were very upset. Yeah, go ahead. Question. Uh, yeah, um, the, the, were, was uh, were there the Philistines or Canaanites? No, 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 no. Oh, the other, not, other. Um, it was not 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 Philistine. It was Canaanites. It oh. it was um, uh, it was in the land of Canaan, but these uh, giants were uh, from. Uh, uh, because I, I should associate with uh, Goliath, he was also a giant. No, no, no. Goliath was uh, many, many hundreds years later. Oh. Then it's like, uh, I guess, like if I uh, remember correctly, like 400 and something years later. Uh, so the, 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 this scene of the, the spies uh, occurred in the same day of uh, the destruction of the temple? Yes, no, up, up, opposite. So, so the destruction of the temple. So Hashem said, uh, you, you, you crying for nothing today because I said the land is, the land is uh, flowing with milk and honey. I want to do, give, give you the best. And now, and, and, and you somehow, you now doubt. You understand? It's, it's like you, your mother. The, the mother wants her baby only good. And now he started questioning, is it good for me? Is it healthy? Is it this or that? Of course it's good. You understand? Are you, your mother only, only wants you to give away only that there is good. You understand? So Hashem said it's a good land, flowing with milk and honey, like very rich. And it does not say that uh, I, you have to conquer it, you have to fight in the wars and stuff like that. Hashem said, I'm giving it to you. Giving me means that you don't have to do anything. Yeah. And, and, the uh, sense, and they came, uh, this uh, Miragon came and they complained that we cannot win, we cannot this, we cannot that. Yeah. Uh, and this, um, uh, the, the Mishkan is uh, the same, uh, the, the, the word is similar to uh, Migdash. It has something to do? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The structure. Oh. Okay. They're based on English, yes. Mm -hmm. Mishkan, yeah. Okay. So that's, uh, that's the story. So everything happened on the same day. So uh, there is uh, the spies cry. Uh, no, I'm sorry. The spy, uh, the spies made the people cry. They believe the report. Um, the first base amigdash was destroyed that day. The second base amigdash was destroyed on the same day. I think uh, this uh, the Spanish acquisition was also 
like uh, they gave him up to the ninth of up, if I don't, or, or the Kri was on the ninth of up, I think, like, uh, and uh, they say this first world war started on the ninth of up, and second was just continuation of the first. So it's uh, all of the bad things happen on this day. Continue. God decreed that because of this of this sin, right? So meaning uh, this Loshan Hara, uh, the Jews would wander in the wilderness for 40 years, and all adult males that uh, of that generation would uh, not enter the land. See, but Midbar chapter 13, 14. Okay. So meaning that all of the people would die during this, uh, I mean, it's not 40 years, but 38 years. But okay. We got the idea. How could the spies, uh, each one of the leader among his people, have sinned so grievously? Where did they, uh, where did they go wrong? Right. So the will of inclination uses uh, contrasting approaches to uh, to entice people to sin. So I mean, uh, as we said, the, the, the word Sadikim before they went, they were uh, like leaders of the tribes. So how could uh, could they fail so so miserably, right? So so one more time, the, the evil inclination uses contrasting approaches to entire people to sin. So I mean, for for this person, this approach, for that person, different approach. At times, it, it fills a person's heart with arrogance, so that um, the person becomes uh, conceived. That he is uh, among uh, the, the God fearing, or even uh, among those who have true love of God, and yet a higher level. Okay. The person therefore sees no reason for self improvement and uh, is content with a mediocre service of Hashem. So basically, it's a very interesting approach, right? So they say, uh, so uh, at times it fills uh, the person's. Heart with arrogance. So the, this guy thinks that he's better than everybody. So, so he he's convinced that he is a God fearing. Others people not so much. He's a worried. he's a true lover of God. So that's uh, that's even worse uh, than, than the first one, right? And he's on a high level and stuff like that. And uh, that's uh, in, in this case he never advances because basically he's, he's God fearing and he, and is alone in. Uh, uh, in this last Yisraelim, it's like one of the last, uh, all of the, almost the, the last step. When you have fear of sin, that that's it, basically, right? And uh, so basically, he, he never advances. It was such an attitude that was uh, the root of the spice era, as we shall explain. Okay, so but not today. Okay, okay so continue. <coughs> continue. <coughs> Yes. So, do we have to sleep in the sukkah or no? Yes. Have to. Uh huh. Understood. I mean, uh, it says that, that uh, it says the halacha is that we have to live in the sukkah. So uh -huh. I will say to say, what does it mean, live in the sukkah? Live, uh, live, uh, consider the sleeping in the sukkah and uh, <clears throat> and eating. Uh huh. Understood. Okay. So we're trying to to eat as much uh, as possible, and some people. Trying to not to drink even a water outside of the soup. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, okay. So we are on uh, Simon uh, 17 and see if number, number two. Okay. So we, we're learning the laws of Shema, right? So the, the topic is uh, the laws of recit uh, recitation of the Shema. Okay. So let's see, see if. It is permitted to recite Shema, Kriya Shema, either sitting or standing. So it doesn't matter, you sit and stand. Usually people sit, but okay, standing. But if one was sitting, it is forbidden to be stringent and stand, and stand for recitation. So um, you can sit for, for the whole duration of the Shema, or you can stand, but you cannot sit and then stand. What is the problem? Country. There is disagreement between Beis Shammai and Beis Hill as to how the verse um, and when you lie down and when you arise is to be understood. Right? Beis Shammai explained that this refers to the physical position that the person must assume when reciting the Shema. So he, this uh, Beis Shammai is taking it literally. Right? In the morning, he must be standing. Um, 
in the, in, in, the, in, in just a second. In the morning, he must be standing. In the evening, lying down. So that's what Beishamai says, like li literally, right? Beishamai maintains that uh, the verse refers only to the times at, uh, uh, that, that, um, that each month must be recited. Okay, meaning uh, in the evening and in the morning, and not in a position. So basically, Beis Hill said in any position, but uh, this is the appropriate time. Since the Halakha follows Beis Hill, so more, most of the time, uh, majority of the time, we follow Beis Hill, not Beis Shammai. So it says after Mashiach comes, we're going to switch to Beis Shammai. So basically, yeah. But it does not mean that Beis, Beis Shammai is wrong. Right, so he is wrong. So this is words of the living God, and this is words of the living God. But we follow this this hill most of the time. So one more time, since the halacha follows base hill, it is forbidden for a person to act as if he is behaving according to opinion of base uh, base shemai, meaning standing up. Thus, even if person would like to stand for some reason, for example to aid his uh, concentration, he may not do so, since it appears that he is standing because of the opinion of Beishamai, Mishnah Brura 65.3. I have, I have a question. Okay. Uh, which Shema we are talking about? Because I have the Siddur here up front. And I, I, I saw the Shema several times uh, in the day, for example, as a kind of blessing uh, to pray at home and in weekday, Shahari, there is uh, another Shema. Uh, for example, previous to the Amida, is, uh, there is a Shema. Yeah. No, okay. Uh, so, okay. So, we, we have Shema three, three times a day. Three times. Uh, so, far, first is um, it's in the morning, in the Shahari prayer, in the morning. Whether it's holidays or uh, or Shabbos or weekday, it doesn't matter, in the morning Shabbos. And second Shema we have in the evening, in the Mariv, Aravit Mariv prayer. Okay? And the third, the third time, like the shorter Shema, we have before the bedtime. Oh. So, yeah. And so actually, actually, the fourth time when we say Shema, it's actually in our, before we say Karbonus, we said the Shema Israel and the first paragraph. So, I mean, in the Cedar, I think we will find it four times, but two, two main times. Out of those, two main times. So that's what, what we discuss here, in the morning and in the evening. Uh, because um, I, I thought uh, some time ago that Shema was uh, the uh, three, uh, four, four words. I don't know. I don't remember how. Um, uh, Shema Israel. Uh, Okay, no. Hashem, okay, no. Hashem, yes. And no. then the whisper, Baruch uh, Shem. Yes. I, I thought that Shema was only saying those two. No, no. no. It's a, it's it's a first line. It's it's a first first line of the first paragraph. Yes, yes. And then and the Sidur, I I saw that there was a. a, a Bedtime Shema and in the service, in the service at the yes. show, there was a extended yes. version. Uh, yes. Yes. So, so yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but, but in, in the Bedshma, you, you, you say the first verse, Baruch Shem quote, and then the first paragraph. That's it. Maybe some people say all, oh, but it's not, not necessary, basically. So, all right. So, all right. So, let's, uh, right. let's put it aside. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about here uh, like requirements, halakhic requirements. We're talking about uh, morning shma and evening shma. So, uh, so we say, kids are saying you can say it while sitting or standing, doesn't matter, right? But you cannot sit and then stand up. Why? Because it would look like you go by shama, by shama. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. So let's say you say, uh, Myra, after. Uh, after plug, uh, plug and milk. So at night, do you have to say the three paragraphs? Usually, usually okay. Usually, I like to plug and Okay, so let let's say I'm I'm. It's usually people don't do that. Usually people don't do that. Usually people do it after after the sunset. After the sunset, 
it's more more, more common practice. Right. But so if you, even if you but just to answer your question, so I, I understand now exactly what, what you're saying. So even if you do after the sunset and everybody's cool, so we still say saying it after the nightfall, complete nightfall. I always repeat uh, three paragraphs after the nightfall. So basically, okay. And if you go by Rabbeinu Tam, like 72 minutes, so you say after 72 minutes. So that's uh, that's what it is. So it's not only like in a, in a shul, they, they remind only in the summer when they accept the Shabbos early. And as you said, of course, you 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 you, you pray this mitra like before the sunset, but uh, only then. But, uh, but we still uh, say after the nightfall. Okay, so it was 18, Con continue. So basically you have to sit or stand, doesn't matter, but, uh, uh, but, not, but you cannot sit and, and then stand. But I, I would say that when you sit, you have better concentration as we discussed about other mitzvahs. Okay, <clears throat> continue. However, it is forbidden to recite the Shema while lying down. Okay, so again, lying down, what is the problem? Uh, problem again, we're going by, by Beit Shammai, right? That's uh, that's a problem again. So let's say, comment uh, Whether lying on, uh, on one's front or back, or even inclining slightly to the side, it is improper um, and uh, smacks of haughtiness <clears throat> to be lying down while accepting God's sovereignty. Shokhanovic 63.1, Mishnah Bura 62. Okay. So as um, I'm not sure if we ever discussed it or maybe we discussed with some, some people privately. So in in the case of the need, in the case of the when the person is sick, right, and he wants to pray. So our sages say, Shokanara said, so you can uh, lay on your side, right side or left side, or whatever, uh, like he has pain in the back, whatever he has, right? Has fever, this and that, so he can uh, lay on a side and pray. There is no problem. He can even pray Shmona Esra like that, right? But if he's uh, if, if he's healthy, he's normal. He, there is nothing bothering him. Uh, but, but okay. But even if when he is sick, he cannot pray on his back or or he, on on his stomach. That's a sign of arrogance. Right? That's okay. Um. But if he's uh, he's healthy, there's no problem with him. He he's not allowed to 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 pray while he's lying down. That's the sign of arrogance. Doesn't matter how you are slightly uh, oh, fine. So the the, the better Shema is uh, uh, to mean uh, to be pray uh, sitting, sit, sitting, sitting. Yes, uh, it's sitting forbidden to to be totally lying in the bed. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And, and unless, as I said, the person is sick. He, he is a weak and he cannot. So that's that's a different story. That's a different category. Okay, they're not a, uh, But otherwise, yeah, we're talking about a normal, healthy person. Yeah, sitting on a bed. Right, question: What does it count as breaking the halacha? Let's say someone's uh, standing right for the morning spa for the morning spa, right? Someone's standing and well, he what's feels. That, what's, that, what's, that, what's that? Before we can from from the beginning to the end, right? He was standing. Before and just yeah, 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 yeah. okay, all right, okay, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. The thing is, in the middle of the Shema, right? He would at this point because his legs got tired or whatever, he would usually sit down, but he still keeps on saying, Does it count as breaking the halacha? That's it, that's the issue, yes. I mean, uh -huh. af af after the fact, he, he doesn't have to uh, re repeat the Shema after the fact, you're right, it does not have, but it looks like that he's trying. To follow two two opinions, like like many times, like uh, we uh, when the, in, in these all the questionable cases, and I I, I was to, to, uh, I was telling you, so since there is strong opinion like this, strong opinion like that, so we try to to follow the middle path to satisfy two opinions. Especially, it's not hard, so, right? So, but in this case, it is forbidden to satisfy two opinions because it's uh, like biblical. Go ahead. Oh, no, 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 I was going to say, uh, for, uh, so it's it's forbidden to follow both opinions because it's derisive? Yes, yes. But, but I could... Because, because, because uh, no, okay, no, one, one second. So they, they, because our sages say, halacha is like base killing. Uh -huh. So now, now halacha is not like the shaman. 
Understood. Yeah. You understand? So, so, but, but they, they, they say, so well, since there is such opinion, so you can stand or sit. So they still say it doesn't matter how you sit. They still say, that when they say when you're lying down, when you stand standing up, he said it means they, they refer to the time when person standing up, meaning in the morning, lying down in the evening, like when people normally lay down. You understand? But, uh, but it's, not, it's not the pause in, in what he's going to say, Shma. So basically it doesn't matter. That's what uh, what we're following. Okay. Continue. If before he began, he was already laying down, he should lean completely up on uh, his side and recite the Shema. Number point. Due to the difficulty involved in arising from the bed and getting dressed, he is allowed to recite in the bed. However, this applies only uh, to one who is not wearing any clothing. And who does have to dress himself before reciting the Shema? However, one who is wearing clothing must arise and recite the Shema. Okay. I have a question. Let's say someone uh, washed his hands, uh, got on his bed, and got off of his bed ne next second to go down and Shema Nazari. Let's say. He doesn't have to wash his hands because he went on the bed, does he? No, no. If he did not touch the hidden parts, no. Uh-huh, uh-huh, understood. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Okay, so, all right. So, 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 Mishnah Brewer says, so I, I, I have to explain this. So, I mean, today, people, like normal people, I would say, normal people, especially men, do not uh, sleep undressed. But in olden days, it was not uncommon. It's, it's very common to, uh, to sleep undressed. Don't ask me why, but uh, I, I, I don't know, for, for, Whatever reason, it was only one, one set of clothing. I mean, they were trying to preserve that set of clothing, right? Okay. So that's, I think, the, the one of the ideas. So, so they, they say if he if he is undressed and now he has to get dressed and stuff like that. So it's another exception because uh, it's too 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 much. Uh, all right. If he is slightly ill, okay, here we go, and uh, it is difficult for him to lie uh, to lie completely up on this side. He is nevertheless obligated to lean somewhat on, on, uh, uh, upon his side. So somewhat, for, for example, I, I give you this example. Um, if, you, uh, for, for the, in, in, um, if you went to, to the bathroom, like in the middle of the night, right? He went to the bathroom and he, and he came and he's laying down and he just remember, oh no, I forgot to, to say blessing after the bathroom. So in this case, you, you're not obligated to get up. You can uh, lean on one side, like uh, lay on one side, and and uh, and say the blessing uh, while we're in bed. Okay. So all right. So of course, when he's slightly ill, they say okay. okay I have a question. So let uh, let's say uh, you're you're allowed to uh, say it. My question is, uh, let's say you're saying uh, a bracha or something like that, right? And uh, for example, I had this problem with an apple once. So. Some kids asked me, did you say Hashem or did you say Adoy, right? Because I want to have water afterwards. And so I, I said, I said Hashem. So they said, you could have the water. So it, does that mean it's okay to say uh, Hashem and Eloi Keno in English? Uh, sorry, I didn't get your question. You, you, you're, you're trying to, to make a brach on water, so you're in the bed and trying to make a brach on water? That's, that's the question I didn't get. No, no, no. the question is, if you made hamapo, right? Hamapo, yes, you say hamapo. But you made it with Hashem. You didn't make it with a die. Why, why, right? why not? No, no, sorry, sorry. why not? I understand why. Why? Why? So in, in hamapo, the, 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 there is no a die, there is Hashem? I don't get it. What is it? What is it? No. I'm saying you said it in English. Oh, 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 I apologize. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, okay, okay. All right, yes, yes. All right, sorry. Okay. So if you say if you say it in English and you want water, you're allowed to you're allowed to uh, uh, make a, then make another hamapel afterwards. I, I didn't get so you he, he I, started I, I, saying saying hamapel. So let, let, let me try to understand. He started saying hamapel, and then in the middle of hamapel, he understands he wants to drink more water. Uh, no, right. after saying hamapel. After so so let. Let him say, yeah, no, say, let him say blessing, drink some water, there is no problem. 
But he's going to have to say Hamapal again, correct? No, not necessarily. For war or not, for war or not, it's not. Uh -huh. But uh, what's it called? If he does have to say Hamapal again, it doesn't count as if the first bracha was uh, in... Uh, no, uh, no, no, no. I mean, if, if it was not, not his intention, for for example, I mean, he got too hot, he, I mean, like, like he, he went to bed, uh -huh. his, his intention to sleep, and now he feels like uh, I don't know, he, he ate something. That uh, and uh, he, his stomach burns, right? And he he wants to go uh, have some water, hot tea. So I mean, uh -huh. it was not his intention. That's uh, he he wanted to go to bed. So no, he, uh -huh. it's not in vain. No. Because usually, because usually, if you're not sure, let's say you said a dain, right? Let's say you said a dain for yeah. after Asha or something, right? Yes, yes. But you forgot if you actually finished the bracha, if you said the whole bracha, so on and so forth. You're not allowed to uh, go back because it's derisive, yeah. correct? Exactly. Yes. But, yes. But does the same apply if you said it in English? Exactly. It does not make any difference. It does. Huh? Uh -huh. No, no. It's exactly the same. I mean, when you say it in English or any other language, you you fulfill your obligation. That's it. So that, what is the difference? You say it in Hebrew, or you say it in English. No, but I'm saying if you in English. And you decide maybe I should say it again. Now, if I decide to make uh, say it again in Hebrew, there's a problem. Why? No, because it's exactly, going to be derisive. Exactly, if, yeah, I, yeah, if, yeah. if I exactly. Say it, uh, exactly. But the same doesn't apply to English. Is it derisive if I say English? It, it, it is that. If I, I mean, say it again in English, no, no, sorry, 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 sorry. just say in any language once. So second time is is a uh, is is going to be uh, using Hashem's name in vain. But let's but make it such a uh -huh. simple. That's it. Doesn't matter. So, and the second so, time, that doesn't matter. You say it in English, or you you say it in uh, in Hebrew. Does not matter. Or the first time you say it in Hebrew, second time you want you want to say it in English. So that's the problem. So what? Uh, it's uh -huh. actually was very practical, and uh, I taught some people like in the different classes. So I I, I told them when they make uh, this um, blessing for for the family, uh, for um, kiddush. Right? Mm -hmm. So I, I told them saying in a language that uh, the family would understand what you're saying, right? And then you say uh, in Hebrew, because when, when you just read in Hebrew and nobody understands, it, it's useless. You understand? Mm -hmm. But you have to skip some words, some phrases you must keep, right? So you 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 cannot uh, say that Hashem is the master of the universe. You cannot say that because if, if you said it in English. It's you. You fulfill the obligation. So second, uh, second time when you like after that, uh, right after that, you st start saying uh, uh, this uh, kiddush in Hebrew. It's like in vain. You understand? You already fulfill your obligation. So there is some parts that you skip, and it, it's it's not considered like. Basically, you you give uh, a general idea about the kiddush, skipping some parts, skipping the last blessing, and there is no problem. You don't. Uh, translate the, the blessing on the wine and uh, the last blessing, basically. Uh, so why 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 do a lot of people say God, but you're not allowed to say Adoy ever? Like not 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 when davening. I'm saying a lot of people say God, but nobody says Adoy when they're not davening. Uh, that but um, nobody said that, that that it is proper. Oh, it's not. Oh, okay. They, they, uh, so it's all right. So they're we're all going right. to get, we're, we're going to get uh, in, in, in the kitchen to, to this place. So he said, it doesn't matter if it, you, you say it in any any language. It's not uh -huh. proper. It's not only I mean, of course, well, in Hebrew, when you say Adoy, it's, uh, it's uh, the more severe consequences, but it applies the same uh, to um, any other language. Right? I mean, it, it's common, like, uh, when the people talk, but we have to Try not to not to use such a language. Understand? Understood. So that's uh, you're right. That's a good question. Okay, continue. So see if number three. Before one begins to recite Shema, he should have in mind uh, that um, with recitation he intends to fulfill the mitzvah of reciting Shema that the Holy One, blessed be He, commanded us. So that's first obligation. So Hashem told us to recite Shema. This is one of the 610 13 mitzvahs, and I, I accept upon myself this invitation. Continue. Uh, when he says words Shema Israel, 
he should concentrate on the following meaning. Okay, so let's see the, the commentary. Okay, so let, let me read the commentary first and then we continue. One who did not concentrate on the meaning, on the, meaning, on the words uh, of the verse of the Shema Israel, Baruch Shem, uh, etc., has not fulfilled he, his obligation and must repeat from the beginning of the Shema until the end of the first passage. Shokhan Oref, Mishnah Brura, okay. One must also be careful when repeating the, uh, the verse Shema Israel, not to recite it aloud, as such a double recitation gives impression of one who is accepting upon himself the sovereignty of two deeds. God forbid. Mishnah Brura, okay. So let, let me understand, uh, let me explain what it says. So it says, um, um, So when, uh, when we say, especially the, this uh, first verse, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elkeinu Hashem Elkeinu So you have to concentrate that you accept in Hashem as a king over everything. He's, a, he's the only one. He's the king and he's the only one, right? So, and it says, if you, if you did not have this, uh, <clears throat> this concentration, so the Shofanar said that you have to repeat the Shema. But don't say it out loud. When you say it out loud, Big issue. So people, what is the big issue? See people around you or here, Shema Israel, and then he said again, Shema Israel. So, so basically, the guy saying, Shema Israel, he here or Israel, right? Uh, this is our God. And uh, uh, one and a half minutes later, or thirty seconds later, he said again, Shema Israel. This is also our God. So basically, it uh, it looks like right on the surface. That he accept uh, two deities upon himself. That's, that's for sure. Right? We don't do that. So they say if he could not concentrate, say it quietly, even without uh, closing your eyes with a hand, like uh, so nobody had to see. Rabbi, why? Why when, for example, a, a rabbi quotes a pasuk when he quotes Shema, right? He says Shema Israel Hashem Elikeinu. Why can't he just say the whole pasuk? Well, like with oh, the okay, all right. okay, you're you're right. So technically, technically, there, there is no problem since it's a complete passage from the beginning to the end. He has said that he, he can say completely the, the way it's pronounced. You're, you're right, hundred percent. But we're trying to be careful and uh, not to be in this um, in this situation when sometimes we would uh, like somebody interrupt us or or we have our thoughts like uh, you want to add something. Uh, like says, sometimes you're speaking and then you forgot, so, oh, well, one second. And you want to go back and it's going to be in the middle of the passage and you did not finish. That's the issue. Uh -huh. so, my, you know, so I have a but, question. But technically you write 100%. It is absolutely allowed to say the, the way you're supposed to. You write 100%. Yeah. So on, on the last word, in a chod, do we pronounce it a, a chod or do we do we make a ch like a complete... Uh, okay, let's... let's uh, it's it, it's all in here. So let's get to it. And we're going to, to see yeah, to see the the intention what what you should supposed to have and everything. It's a uh, in in this uh, sima. Okay, continue. Same sentence from the beginning again. When he says the word Shema Israel, he should concentrate on the following meaning here or Israel that Hashem, who is our God, so so we we accept as our God. He is Hashem, who is one and only and unique in heaven and the earth. So you accept him as the only one everywhere. Heaven and earth everywhere. He should draw out the letter has, exactly as you said, <laughs> in words echa. So I thought it's an exalacha, but it's actually it's, it's, well, Yeah, I don't know. My, my, my question wasn't about drawing it out. My uh, question was, uh, what's it called? So there's the hey and there's the ches. So I'm no, saying- this is ches. This is yeah, ches. yeah, yeah, correct. So is it just supposed to be a normal, is it just a, is the ches supposed to sound like, like or is it supposed to be more? Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's read and then we explain. Uh -huh. okay, uh, let's read. He should uh, draw out the letter ches, a chot, right? Um, in a word, a chot, long enough to declare in his mind, sovereignty of the Holy One, blessed be he in the heaven and the earth. So it's up to him, like how long he needs. Commentary. Um, in Ashuri script, 
the script used in, uh, in writing the Sefer Torah, the, um, of the letter has, there is a, a protrusion that points upwards, hinting to Hashem sovereignty. It's very interesting. It's like a crown. I protrude that's like a crown. Um, even over the even over the heads. Shulchanor 61.6. Okay. Wait, so so is uh, so is a ches, uh, is there supposed to be like a gargle on the back of your throat when you do yes. it, or is it yeah. uh, there is supposed to be? Uh -huh. yes, 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 yes. Okay, so uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Continue. With regard to letter Dalit, he should also draw it slightly. So, but it should, it should be Dalit should be like uh, very clear. There is a uh, Dalit. Commentary. The Mishnah of Rura, 61.18, uh, who cites Magid Abraham, who gives the exact timing for how long each letter should be pronounced. Okay. So this uh, Dalit should be long enough, uh, long enough to think that the, uh, the Holy One, blessed be He, is the only one in, in His world, and that He rules over the four the directions of the world. The letter Dal is a numerical value of four, so meaning four uh, corners of the world. So okay, so basically, some some people uh, what they do they they point uh, to, to their eyes, so this side, this side. I mean, uh, if if, uh, if 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 you're not sure what you're doing, so better not to do it. So just just uh, uh, just think that he's uh, he's a king. Is uh, um, in all four four corners of the world. Right, if, if if you don't have corona for the first pasuk after the fact, do you have to go back? That, that that's uh, that's what it says. Yes, but oh. uh, but to try like uh, it's uh, it's very very like try the very hard to have corona. Nice, but, but oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Because they say, but you, you cannot say it out loud, and how can you pronounce? This letter in, uh, in the, another letter, if it's not out loud, so I mean, it creates like uh, so somebody like uh, he, he 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 was supposed to fly somewhere and he, he was left uh, and and he uh, like uh, were, 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 was late for his plane. So it's like a disaster. You understand? However, one should be scrupulous uh, to distort the pronunciation. Of not I'm sorry, has for sure. Well, one more time. <laughs> one should be scrupulous not to destroy the pronunciation of the word the heart, so very clearly, by drawing out slightly some of the letters of the word. For some of the masses distorted. So people on the Shulchanor said they distort how some pronounce a had, a had, a, right? In drawing the middle similar syllables too, too long. A had. I'm not sure how they do it. Right? And some pronounce it as a, I mean, it's in English. Echod. In Hebrew, I think it's Echod. Echod de. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, in Hebrew it says Echod de. Okay, so, okay, so it should be, so one, one more time. So let's read it in Hebrew so it's uh, easy. So some mass is distorted. Echo odd. Echo odd. I'm not sure how or why they would do it. Echo odd. So double O, basically. Echo odd. Some pronounce uh, Hebrew. One second. Uh, echo, echo de. I'm not sure how they. I mean, uh, okay, for whatever reason, they, they uh, not echo I, I think the problem is why they pronounce it is because when you really want want to do the dalit, right? You end up doing right? You do a a sound at the very end. I uh -huh. think that's what they're talking about. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Uh, there is the distorted the proper pronunciation of dalit. Okay, as you said. Right? It is a better not to draw out the pronunciation at all. Than to draw out uh, in uh, and distort the proper pronunciation. Okay, so some people so they say, uh, that's it. 
like short. So if you do not know how to, to pronounce or you're not sure and you cannot concentrate, so make it short, but pronounce uh, uh, all of the letter correct, letters correct. It is customary to recite the verse of the Shema Israel in a loud voice to arouse one's concentration and to put one's uh, right hand over the eyes while reciting it. Commentary. To prevent one's uh, from looking at anything that they uh, hinder one's concentration. So basically, well, why do we cover our eyes? So we cover our eyes so we don't see things like I, 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 I want like uh, to, uh, for, for better concentration, so I'll close my eyes. So I, I, I don't look, so all of these distractions come from looking. So I'm not looking anywhere, so I, I have better concentration. So why not uh, close your eyes without touching your no, face? No, no, that, that, that's what you do. We, we close our eyes and help uh, in, uh, with the hand. Uh -huh. So double, double guard, basically. Yeah. But uh, in this closed eyes, we, we roll the, this side, that, I mean, I, I, I don't roll, but uh, some people do. And if they don't know what to do, they, 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 they draw the cross. That's is this... Is 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 that the the only uh, the only uh, part of a prayer to be recited in that way? The rest can be recited with open eyes. Yes, 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 yes. So the rest. Uh... Wait, right. oh, what's up, what's up? So um, sometime in in some some um, some prayers um, for a better concentration and not. Not to have any distraction, they say it's better to close your eyes. For example, I, I have a specific prayer in mind. Uh, when you say kidusha, right? When when the husband uh, say a repetition of Shmonesra, there is a kidusha. So they say, close your eyes, they don't see any distraction, or look, look at the cedar, but don't look around, basically, because the shkina is there. So do do one one of the two. So that's a uh, second place that I know of when we close our eyes. When it says explicitly. Close your eyes or look at the cedar. Rabbi, which what's it called? So which directions do you go not to make the cross? And like while bowing after Shmoinazri, during Shmoinazri? I, uh, I have to check in the Mishnah Brewer. I remember learning it, but uh, but uh, I mean it, somehow it's, I, I never did it because I it's it's a it's a big warning that, that people like uh, make mistake. So I'm, I'm trying to do just to concentrate. So the, to do the, with the eyes and even everybody, it's like uh, three paragraphs uh, away, like ahead of me, that's, for me, it's too much pressure. Uh, what's you, know, you understand? So I do just minimum requirement, whatever to say, to have minimum kavana, like minimum whatever is necessary and that's it. What do you do after Shmoin Ezra though? After Shmoin Ezra, is there a problem where you have to take three steps back and bow left, right and forward? What, 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 what you, you, what do you mean the, to say Shema at that point? Or? No, no, Shema and Ezra, uh, over there you have to walk three steps back and bow left, right, yeah. and forward. Over there, is there a problem with the cross at all? Like, no, 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 no. Uh huh. No, so, no, first you bow left no, and no, right. No, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. In, in, in that way, so you, you, you bow to the left, why is to the left? You also start from the right, correct? No, left. Left, right. uh, I, I know that it's left correct, but in, in other mitzvahs, you also start from the right. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I have no clue. No, no, right. I mean, uh, the right side takes precedence, no? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, okay. But but here, since you, you, uh -huh. you fit in the shkina, so you, uh, you, you bow to the left, which is his right, whatever his right means, right? Uh -huh. And then to the right, which is his left, because uh, like you, you're standing in front of the shkina. Uh -huh. and, uh, so it's not correct. And then you bow in front. Okay, continue. After reciting the words Echad, we pause slightly. Kante, since the primary acceptance of sovereignty of the heaven is found in the verse of the Shema, Shema Israel. So after we said that, basically that's enough and, uh, technically, right? I mean, we're going to say more, of course, but Shema uh, Israel, Hashem, Alakena, Hashem Echad. Okay. And, um, and, and, and recite quietly. Baruch Shem Kuat Blessed is the name of the glorious kingdom all, uh, for all eternity. So commentaries say, 
uh, it is recited quite it, uh, quietly that uh, it is a song of the angels, and it is not proper for a mortal to recite the song openly. Right? See Tur 690, see Pesachim 56a, Mishnah Brura 61 Tori for another reason. So, so basically, but the, it's, it's the, the most common, uh, commonly given reason because it's uh, what uh, uh, Malachim say, but uh, uh, they say when when uh, it is a Yom Kippur, right? So we all like Malachim, we all uh, fast, we all invite and stuff, and stuff like that. So we say everybody say like uh, loud, but it's only during the Yom Kippur. Um, oh, it says okay. Where do I second? I, I, I just remember we just had Yom Kippur, except on Yom Kippur. When his sentence is recited aloud, comment eh? on this day we, uh, we recite the uh, Baruch Shem Kvot Mahusol Adabayat aloud, since on Yom Kippur the Jewish people are considered to be on the level of angels. Mishnah Brura. Okay. Uh, and this one also ca uh, concentrates, and, and, one, and one, one must also concentrate on the meaning of the words when recited the sentence. So one, one more time, the translation of the verse, blessed is the name of the glorious kingdom for all eternity. And uh, just since we 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 on this sentence, so I want to just add, so every time when we did the wrong bracha, for example, I, uh, I, I want to eat carrot, right? and I say, bless Hashem for the fruit of the tree, which is wrong bracha, so I cannot, it does not cover carrot. So I have to say Baruch Shem Kvot Mochu So I, in, by by accident, by accident, I lower the um, the name of Hashem in this world because I say Bracha in vain. So I have to say, apologize, and restore it. And how do I store it? I says blesses His name, right, and His glory and kingdom for all eternity. So every time we we, we say this uh, wrong Bracha. Uh, and for and um, and we did not fix it. We we can we have only uh, one and a half to two two seconds to fix it, right? So so I say, but uh, uh, I say um, eight, right? I said no, So in one second, one and two, two seconds, I fix it. So there is no problem. But if it took me like three seconds. So after three seconds, I cannot fix it. So I said, uh, "Bless is the name of His glorious uh, kingdom for all eternity," and I say uh, the correct bracha. Yeah, Israel, go ahead. Yes, uh, is there a bracha for food that cover every kind of food and drink? Yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm, and what, what, what? Okay, so I, I uh, in, in Hebrew it's shihakol nihia bizveron, but uh, in English I think it's uh, by whose uh, uh, but whose word everything came into being, uh, into existing. So we can say that to avoid uh, messing up with the brachot? On, on only if you don't, do not know. So if, if you know that the, the, the carrot is, is a uh, fruit of the ground, so you cannot say uh, uh, shehaku, basically. You have to um, say it's a fruit of the ground. What if is... some, some things that you do not know, there is a mix, I don't know, like... Uh, like puree, I, I have no idea what is it. Maybe it's meat, maybe it's uh, maybe it's eggs, maybe it's I don't know fruits, maybe vegetables, maybe potatoes. I have no idea. But somebody told me that it's kosher, so I say shikakol and I can eat. And uh, the uh, olive is uh, what? What kind of, of blessing is the olive uh, fruit? For fruit, we say. And, that uh, I know uh, the tree, the tree of olive, uh, the. How, how? No, no, no. For, for all of the fruit of the tree, we say uh, for uh, uh, what, what is it for? Create. Uh, no, no, I know, but in English. Oh, so you're from who creates the fruit of the tree? That's how it is. Okay, so so blessed is Hashem who creates the fruit of the tree. I I think he asked olive, olive, not olive. Uh, olive is still it's it's the same rock. Uh, rap, so Rabbi, I think I, I, I heard specifically, I think it was in Stump the Rabbi, but Rabbi Ruben says that uh, if, you don't know the, if, you, if you don't if you don't know, don't eat it at all. Don't make shako. Don't eat it. End of story. Don't eat it until you find out. Okay. 
uh, I mean that, that's <laughs> that's uh, that's the, the the proper approach. But if he's in such a situation, that's all he has. Uh huh. You know, you understand? Uh, so so, but but the rule I, I would say would be one time. So one time you do not know, but second time just <laughs> find the, ask ask people before before putting into your mouth anything. Ask people what's going on. So like. Um, more, most of the time we have packaging, right? And it says on packaging, it says ingredients. Yeah, that's so how you have to know what, what you're eating. For example, I'll give you this example. So there is one, uh, uh, no, no, not one, there is some barbecue sauces, barbecue sauce, right? Kosher or you, but they have anchovies in them. So anchovy is, is, uh, is a fish, right? So it uh, gives this special flavor. So from some time ago, I, I'm not sure, like uh, I, I used to get all of these emails from you, but I, I cannot just follow, that's too much for me. So, and they, they established, they're going to put OU fish. They're not going to put OU parrot, no, OU fish. So basically, even though it's, uh, it's less than 160s ingredients, so they say it's uh, still not allowed to, to use uh, with meat. Because you know for sure there is fish. You understand? So this barbecue sauce. So we use it, for example, with vegetables. There is no problem. We use it with fish, if you fry fish and you put on the side some barbecue sauce, you can dip into the sauce. There's a problem. You understand? So okay. So we try to be careful. Yeah. Go ahead. Another question. So let's say someone says Baruch Ata Hashem, right? And he says Malachim uh, Haolam. Okay. Let's say he says Angels Haolam instead, right? He made the mistake, and so. A second later, he wants to say it again. So let's say he says Baruch Hashem again, right? Baruch Ata Hashem. Does the second time he say Hashem count as uh, Hashem's name in vain or no? It, it, it depends how, how he said If he said, if, if he said that the Hashem is Malach, I mean, uh, like, uh, I don't know, like angel, not, uh, not the king of the world. So that this uh, first bracha is in vain, basically. Uh huh. Yeah, you understand. Okay. So he he must say second bracha, but uh, but uh, the, the way to avoid it, to the, the way to, to avoid all this, not all, but uh, uh, not, not avoid like the, the the way to fix it. So say say bracha on something that for sure requires different bracha, like for for sure you didn't mean to, like it was in your refrigerator and you didn't mean to eat it and stuff like that. You understand? So on that uh, on that uh, so or for example. You you, were, uh, you 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 said the, the the bracha on the tea and you made the mistake something so stop drinking this tea, right? Stop drinking and take something that requires uh, shikakol same same blessing as as uh, as, as, a, as a tea could be a piece of candy or whatever we take right and uh, or if water whatever uh, water is not a good example sorry uh, some some other liquid and they say shikakol and you can you have in mind to have this tea also. So don't, but the, don't say it. That's the the best uh, solution instead of like uh, saying uh, in another blessing with that tea in all of the question uh, questionable situations. You understand? So not everybody agrees. So I mean, maybe it's, um, it depends on what exactly how he said it. So maybe there's some authorities say that after the fact he does not have to repeat it. But if he takes something that original bracha did not cover. All authority agree that he does uh, the right thing, in a sense. So that's uh, what uh, we're trying to satisfy all the authorities. Okay, continue. Okay, and one must also concentrate on the meaning of the words when reciting the sentence, in that uh, uh, blesses Hashem and blesses His glorious kingdom forever and ever. Okay, so let's do one more halacha and we start. Okay, short, very short halacha. <clears throat> so it says. After the side of Baruch Shem Kuat Mahusov Adam Bayat, one should uh, pause slightly. So before starting uh, like uh, this longer paragraph, he has to slightly pause. Commentary say, although Shema uh, and the um, Hafta, so I mean in this uh, first paragraph, right, uh, are both part of the same passage in the Torah, one must pause to demonstrate uh, the, 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 the demarcate. I'm sorry. One more time from the beginning, apologies. Although Shema and Wavei Hafta 
are both part of the same passage in the Torah. One must pause to demarcate between Shema and Baruch Shem, okay, etc., which contains the acceptance of the sovereignty of Hashem and the verse that begin Vahafta. So Vahafta, it's a, um, it's a, it's a first verse of the first paragraph. This, okay, okay. So, so he said Baruch Shem he wasn't more solo the wet. He uh, slight, uh, slightly paused and continued, and then he said Perakav Vahafta. And, uh, and uh, you shall love. Okay, that's the translation, you shall love. Likewise, between the passage of the Shema and, and the second, uh, likewise, between this passage of the Shema, meaning the Hafta, you shall love, and the second passage, begin uh, the Chaya in Shamoa, and it will come to pass, so meaning the second passage of the Shema, uh, if, if, and if it will come to pass if you hearken. Uh, one should pause slightly. So between all of these paragraphs, we, uh, we pause slightly and just to remind us, you, you are allowed between these uh, paragraphs, you are allowed to answer me. Okay, slightly. And again, before the third passage, uh, beginning with uh, uh, Boyomer and, and Hashem said, right? one should pause slightly to, to show that those are three different paragraphs. And one should intend with the recitation uh, of Boyomer passage, I mean, the, the third passage, the last one, to fulfill the positive commandment of uh, remembering the exodus of Egypt. That's uh, how this third paragraph is, uh, is important. Okay, so I think we can stop here. So I'm, um, uh, okay, we open for questions, go ahead. Yes, so first question is, uh, is there a fear to have uh, a certain amount of meals for circus on each day? Or okay. only shop. Okay, okay, okay. So on the okay, so so the question is, is uh, j j just to explain what, what you ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for who so uh, the sukkah is coming. It's actually tomorrow night. It's starting the, the holiday. And uh, how is holiday different from Shabbos? So on Shabbos we are obligated to have three meals, as we learn in the uh, laws of Shabbos book, right? But on holidays we are obligated to two meals. So basically night meal. And we make a kiddush, and uh, the, the kiddush is different. So if you if you if you're going to make your own kiddush, so it's different from uh, uh, from the Shabbos. It's a different page. It's the end of the book. We'll look at the table of contents. It's different, and uh, and so it's first meal and second meal after the shachar is basically after Musa prayer. There is a second meal. The kiddush is very short. It's only two lines. Right, and uh, two lines, and then you say blessing on the wine, so very short, and uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, let's say, and then during the Holomayat, there is uh, no obligation, but since like Holomayat, it says, uh, so I, I try to teach everybody, but uh, I mean, uh, many times somehow people don't hear me. I, I don't know, like, uh, why would they not hear me? Is it says uh, in the Shulchan Aruch, and I bring Shulchan Aruch. And it says uh, very clearly that people who work on Holomayat, they basically, nothing good is going to come out of this mind, basically. Like, Hashem said it clearly. Mm -hmm. Our rabbi said clearly, nothing good. What good? Nothing good, right? So basically, it's not, uh, it's not proper to work on Holomayat, do all of the activities. I mean, if you, if you enjoy to do something, I don't know, maybe, uh, they, they even say don't do even milachas. I mean, unless it's needed for, for enjoyment of the sh of the young mm -hmm. uh, so, so there is no obligation to eat, but on another hand, it says very clearly. So if you're going to eat, eat all of your meals in a sukkah. Mm -hmm. If you have one, if you don't, what good can you do? On 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 Yom Tov, you can fulfill your meals with having mazonas over eight ounces, but on Shabbos you can't, or on Shabbos you also can. No, it's uh, it's, it's, can't. it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. Uh, so yeah, uh, for both days, uh, for for both Shabbos and Yom Tov, you can have eight ounces, or you can have to have bread for both days. No, no, you. Uh, I, I apologize. But, so I, I mean, what I'm saying, they're the, the same. So the proper way to do it on a, on a bread, but if you don't have bread mm -hmm. for whatever reason, and you 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 don't have wine, so you you do it on the uh, that, That's all. I mean, that's uh, when you have, don't have a choice. But proper, it's always to to do meals on bread. That's proper way. Mm -hmm. And as, as we established today, it's a little more than half a slice, so it's not mm -hmm. like uh, end of the world. Mm -hmm.
just say uh, understand so i have one more question for you and uh so i read in the kids sir let's say someone has a beer right he made some bracha shock on beer then he has fish brought them even though he still has the beer in front of him he uh, still has to make a brook on the fish if he didn't have kavana beforehand now uh so my question is like this let's say uh i have two things right i have milk in my hand and also somehow i have a very big hand i also have chocolate in my hand okay so i have both of them at the same time the shackle works on both of them if i eat both yes. of them Yes, yeah, yeah. If they, if they in front of you, uh -huh. for, for, for example, you, you, you have a tea, right? That you, you, you sit down to, you have tea, you have a chicken, and you have a, I don't know, a side dish, a egg salad, whatever, for whatever it is. So and everything is covered. It is on charcoal. Uh -huh. you, you're not allowed to do to, uh, uh, to, to bless. And then Bizrat Hashem, uh, they, they just emailed me shortly. So in one hour or two, you're going to have halachas of brachas. In your head, is all of the answers, and even more answers that you want to know. <laughs> so there's all of the details. All right, is that the yeah. So it's going to be hand delivered. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so I want to tell you one thing that I saw. Well, it's, it's interesting to me. And the kids are. It says it's brought down from someone else. It's brought down that let's say someone has a, a, a milk pot, and the milk pot. It, it said specifically in the kitzer that you don't have to be too machmer on how it was clean. Just clean a little, uh, however it was clean. Don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be clean completely well, so on and so forth. So if you had uh, chicken, right? If you had chicken, and then you decide to have something parv, okay, within less than six hours, right? And you uh, cook that parv thing in that pot, it's allowed. Even though it's a milk pot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, uh uh so just just to explain uh, to, to, to everybody what uh what david said so uh, uh, the the proper way is to have uh, different uh utensils for for meat and for uh, for for meat and for day that's proper have different parts but uh but uh, technically technically right so if you have um <clears throat> if you have a pot and you 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 cooked uh uh, you cooked, uh, what is it, uh, milk, milk, you, you boil milk in that pot. And it's, uh, this pot is ben yamo. Ben yamo, it means that it, uh, it, it stood for 24 hours. So technically, without cashering, you can, uh, you can uh, cook meat in there and there is no problem. The meat is permitted. So, or then... if, uh, sorry, well, 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 let me just, yeah, just yeah. continue. But, uh, but 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 uh, and, and another thing. So if he cleaned it completely, that right, he cleaned with the, with the soap and stuff like that. So and then he cooked in that part uh, part of food. For example, he cooks spaghetti. So uh, in, in a milk pot, and then now he wants to eat with uh, chicken cutlets right, with chicken, right? So they say it is allowed because uh, it is allowed, right? So here's a huge difference between uh, Ashkenazic and Sephardic custom. So Sephardic custom said that even if he intended to, to do it in the beginning, it's allowed. Ashkenazic custom, we do we go stringently. He said, no, if he had intention to eat it uh, with, uh, with the meat, not allowed. But if he did not have any intentions, he just cooked the spaghetti. In general, maybe I'm going to do, do, eat them with cheese. Maybe I'm going to eat them with... Uh, I don't know, with a salad, without uh, meat or cheese. So in this case, if you did not have an intention, so they say after the fact, I mean, um, we, we try not to follow this leniency, but if it's necessary, that's all he has as a side dish, they would allow to eat. But uh, that's, uh, that, that's like a little bigger explanation of what you were trying to say. So uh, I have a question for you, because the kids also says, uh, you have to have two different salts, why? Because one salt meat, one salt milk, because there's some particles. So why over here with some salt, we're worried about particles, but over here for the meat, we're not worried uh, with the pot, we're not worried about exactly, particles. Exactly, exactly. So, okay, so here's, here's the thing. So I'm going to explain what kids are saying. <clears throat> so the salt, you have the salt, salt shaker, right? Yeah. So where you, where you, so you, you're making this, uh, I don't know, this uh, daily dish, I don't know, milk, I don't know, and uh, 
and, and he tried try to solve it. So they say this um, evaporation from the milk, right? It's from it's 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 boiling, right? Or it's almost boiling. Like the, 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 the steam is coming. So the steam is going to to to, to set on on this uh, on this uh, salt shaker cover. So next time, if you take the same and then try to uh, to, to put this uh, what is it on. Um, uh, on uh, you, you try to salt meat, so this uh, steam from the meat is is going to to dissolve this this uh, residue from from the milk, and it's going to come back. So of course it's less than one sixty. Of course this or that, or that but if uh, but uh, this uh, less than one sixty, as we discussed recently, it's only after the fact. So if you know like that's what you're doing in the beginning, it's forbidden. That even if it's not not one city. of course after the fact. So if you already did it, there is no problem. But uh, but technically we don't do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll give you two simple scenarios, and I and I want to know. So there uh, carrots or just a simple halakha. You let me know. Let's say you're next to a person, right? Uh, you're you're what? I didn't get it. You're, you're serving a person food. You're serving your house. Okay, you're yeah, serving got food, yes. right? And this person he makes a homer from himself. Listen, I'm only having this type, even though his rabbi, so on and so forth, is uh, allowed, right? He says, no, call of Israel all the time, right? So, uh, in that case, I have to serve him call of Israel. And the second case is, right, what if for him the halacha, right, by his rabbi, is call of Israel only UD treif, let's say, right? Let's say he has this type of yes, yes, yes. So, uh, the second so am I allowed to still serve him uh, UD in both cases? No, or no, 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 no. You're not allowed to, to, to serve. So, okay, to, I, I want to, uh -huh. since we're recording, I want to explain what the video said. So, so basically, <clears throat> um, there are two types of dairy products. So the dairy means uh, that it's, uh, it was made of, of cow's milk, right? Or goat milk, uh, right? So, so of the milk of the kosher animals, right? So, but... Uh, some of them were uh, made under under supervision as of a Jew, so it does not mean that he oversees the this uh, milking process from the beginning to the end. But he was on the premises and he could uh, come in and go uh, come out anytime. So basically, the workers knew that uh, that he can come out any seconds, and they would not mix in this milk uh, any uh, milk of non-kosher animals, of the horse, of this uh, camels, all of this. Things. Okay, so basically, this milk is called halaf Israel, and it means milk uh, supervised by uh, by a Jew, right? So it's a greater status, cost a little more, or a lot more, doesn't matter. Okay, so some some people they are very stringent, and they go uh, by this uh, only by this milk. Okay, but uh, Rav Moshe Pine, since that's also he said since this uh, uh, the the government tried to uh, the they uh, in the, uh, like um, what is it uh, is is very strict with uh, with all of these uh, fair farmers that uh, like with the milk that produce it has no any additions of the other milk and plus like in my mind like the way I understand this uh, I I saw in the store like in a non Jewish store I saw like uh, it was uh, I think it was camel milk I was I was interested so I so camel milk wow interesting. It was like twelve dollars a small bottle, like crazy, crazy small bottle. So I okay, I, I was interested, right? So so twelve dollars. So and and this uh, kosher milk, the whole gallon is three dollars. Yeah, you understand? So like today, like no no normal per person would uh, mix this non kosher milk milk uh, with a kosher milk. So in olden days, why would they do it? Right? Why? Because uh, this uh, camel milk or horse milk, it's uh, it uh, has like uh, more, more fat, and this fat is good for preservation. So the milk would not be like uh, would be like rich milk, uh, and uh, would not go bad as, as fast and stuff like that. And they can charge more. So that's that was the reason. But today, since uh, it, this milk of the camels is uh, cost much more, so why you no know, no normal person would uh, add. Uh, uh, the, that milk and plus there is a supervision of the government and stuff like that. So it's very, very, very unlikely that people are going to mix anything into it. 
and it became known as OUD. So it, it does not, OU, OU is a Orthodox Union, uh, D is a daily. So basically it means that uh, <clears throat> uh, the milk is kosher according to this company, Orthodox Union, but it was not supervised by a Jew. So, okay, so some uh, Jews, okay, so next part. Uh, so some Jews, uh, they, they decided to go to Egypt and they say, okay, I wanna eat, I want only uh, halaf Israel cheese, all the uh, halaf Israel milk, only this. So for them, this uh, OUD uh, is not kosher, basically, not kosher. So basically, if he, you give him, uh, you give him a plate or you give him a pot as a present, and say this uh, Moisha, that's a good part. I, I just bought it from Macy's, I don't know, two months ago, but we don't need it, stuff like that. And I know that you just got married, he's a part. So if you said it's milk, or you do, or you do he has to kosher it, basically. And then for him, it's not kosher. So basically to these people, we cannot feed them all you do. Even if it's just a homer that they made on them? Yeah, 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 yeah. For, for, for him, it's, it's uh, became a law. Once he accepted on himself, uh, uh, this OUD, so it's uh, it's become a lot. But I I go, I'm going to tell you a joke about this. Uh, it's it's a joke. Uh -huh. uh, so one 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 person. So he like he, he was working in an office with most of the Jews, right? And uh, they have a common refrigerator. So I also like work in such an office, but uh, there were mostly non-Jews. But um, okay. So and and he bought himself this uh, halaf Israel meal. Right, so for his coffee, he put it, and uh, that's it. So he comes, uh, he he drank a little uh, coffee. Next morning he comes, bottle all, almost empty, it's like you normal. And 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 then he said uh, he he bought another one and said moisture. Okay, put it in the refrigerator, drank a little coffee. Next uh, day he comes, the bottle is all, almost empty, like you normal. He said he put a sticker. He, he bought a new one and said, private property. It's a gazelle. Gazelle, it's a, it's a stealing. I, I, I'm not going to forgive. He, like, he's saying that he's never going to forgive if somebody takes his meal. Okay, he comes next morning. It's almost empty. It's like, you know, he was so mad, so mad. So he bought, the, he bought the, this, uh, this uh, what is it? The, the, next, uh, the next day he bought another bottle and say halaf stam. Halaf stam meaning that uh, the, the milk, the milk by Nanju. He comes like more, it's full. So there is a many fools out there. So halaf, uh, not halaf Israel, they're not going to, to, to drink, right? But there is no problem for them to steal from other person, right? But the, they, uh, the halaf stam, milk that produced by Nanju, whoa, whoa, whoa. These are not going to drink, so yeah. Yeah. And you understand there are many, many, many contradictions. So people who try to go cuckoo and over. So I'm, I'm not saying Halaf Israel is over or yeah. cuckoo, but uh, people who are, adapt uh, crazy things, they're very lenient with uh, basic requirements. That's what I noticed many times. I'm not talking about Sadiqim, that it's Sadiqim period, but uh, simple people who try to go over a little, they, they'll. Well, that's that's what happened to them. Go ahead. I, I thought I thought of something else though. Him, let's say he's working with goyim, right? And he puts it in the fridge, right? He has milk, all of Israel put in the fridge. So if his problem, he's worried about the goyim who milk the cow, OU, whatever, right? Why doesn't he have the same problem if he puts it in a fridge where goyim use that fridge? No, no but, but goyim, I'm not, I'm not going to, I mean, if, if anything, they're going to steal milk. They're not going to, as, as I told you, this, this small bottle, the bottle was like this, what, $12. Uh -huh. Okay, and then you have the whole gallon uh, of OU for three dollars. So uh -huh. um, to steal this to give you the, the more expensive, right? Uh, I, I to agree. steal your pennies and give you a hundred dollars. Okay, I mean if he's stupid, yeah, that's what he does. I agree with you, but that person, that whole of Israel person, right? He's yes. worried about that person uh, putting the camel milk in the over there. Why is he getting all the, 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 the people? The, the, the people were stealing milk. Period. Uh huh. They were not they were putting back any like uh, they, uh, it's a pure gazel. Uh -huh. I say gazel and that he's not going to forgive did not uh, uh, budge them. But uh, Halaf Stam, it's uh, worried them very much. So that's uh, 
Do you, do you think uh, if it said OUD Israel, it would get more people to buy it or no? Because what, 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 if, what, what, uh, do, do people buy Hall of Israel? Do a lot of people buy Hall of Israel just because it has the word, word Israel on there? So it sounds more uh, more kosher or no? Yes. No, I mean, Hall of Israel, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, p- people who do not do not care, they do not care. But people who care, so they they ready to pay more and go like uh, uh, like uh, ne- next to me. Like um, I, I mean, they, you have to go a few blocks to to get halak israel. It's not the next to me, like few smaller stores. They, they don't carry halak israel. It's a few blocks away, so there is a halak israel. So I mean, if you if person looks for convenience stuff like that, so maybe he's uh, but, uh, okay. Israel questions. Uh, yes, uh, fish is always kosher. Fish uh, is not always kosher. Oh. Fish is kosher only if it has uh, fins and scales. Not all, all, all of the fish uh, has a fin and scale. Uh, but those fish that, has, uh, that have these signs are always kosher? Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, I have a question about the... Uh, the Tanakh can be translated into modern Hebrew, or it must must be always ancient Hebrew. Uh, well, I'm sorry. The, the question: If Tanakh was translated into modern Hebrew, yes, it, it's it's allowed to be translated to modern Hebrew. I'm I'm not sure if it is translated. I mean, uh, I mean that there is a. I I, I would say there is a still a original. It's an original. Uh, 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 like biblical Hebrew, but there is commentaries. So it's, uh, some words that uh, biblical that uh, not, not using in modern language, they just explain these words. That's uh, and it's 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 not only like uh, because the language changed. Like even Russian, he explained the words what do they mean in Humash or even in Tanakh. That's because uh, that's I I have I am having some trouble. Uh translating with the translator of some texts of Judaism. Oh, no, 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 um, no, 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 no. They, no, most no. of them are biblical or ancient. Exactly, Hebrew, exactly. Translator no, 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 no. Does not work. No, no, no. Uh, so can, who, who can I consult to translate this? Uh, what, 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 what do you want? To, to translate in English? Uh, for example, the some blessing of uh, Amida, uh, in the Sidur is not uh, completely translated. And I put that in the translator and uh, it it does not work. Okay, you know, um, let let me look for a Sidur for you. Let me look for a Sidur in English, right? Or Spanish, what do you like? Uh, No, no, in uh, English. Uh, Spanish is uh, not, 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 not working. Okay, all right, let me look. You have iPhone or not? No, no, uh, Android. Android, okay, so uh, let's look at Android. Well, where we have that? It should be, I, I think it should be good, uh, good, uh, Sidurim, um, for free, I think. Ah, uh, yes, I, I look, but um, uh, it's always so uh, you must pay for must pay for them, or they are uh, always there is some issue with the, the, the ones I looked. On the internet, mm-hmm. but but they, they, they should not cost much. It's like a few dollars, no? Uh, dollars? Yes, for example, there is a app from Mart Scroll that it's six six dollars, but mm-hmm. it's from the App Store. Uh, but this uh, definitively is not not free. Uh, if it is free, you always have some kind of issue. For example, mm-hmm. this this Sidor, this art school is the best. If, if it's possible for you to collect money to save money, you, you have to buy art school. Uh, it's, it's an app for, for Android. Of course, there, there, there is no app or there is an app? Yes, yes. yes, yes okay, yes, so yes, so, so buy, buy this art school. So save money little by little and buy this uh, art school. Uh, art school, it's like, I don't know, uh, like, Mercedes <laughs> in a, in the car. It's like uh, nothing. I, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe Lamborghini. Like all others uh, are only good, but this is uh, the, the best with all of the best commentaries. 
So if you buy R scroll, so basically whatever Viridian is shot in a Kitsur, they incorporated all of these things in there and they have small commentaries. So it's the best of the best. So if you um, have this uh, opportunity, so please buy that one. Uh, and uh, I have uh, some two, one more question is if, do you have to say the, the whole uh, meal uh, after meal of, of uh, bracha of, of bread, if you eat some loaf of bread? No, it's, a, it's, a, it's, not, it's not a loaf of bread. So if you, if you eat uh, 28 grams or more, more than 12, 28 grams, so it's like uh, one slice of bread, let's say, the, the, depends on, on, on bread, let's say three quarters. Well, let's put it on, on a video on the safe bread? side. Well, yes, a slice so, of bread is uh, or is the bracha. Yes. So you uh, you you ask me what, what bracha to make? Is uh, it, yes, no, because in the in the sidur in the app say that, that you you must say after meal bracha only uh, even if only a, a piece of bread. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's what I'm saying. No. But I'm not sure because I usually. No, no, that, that, that's exactly correct. Yes. And it's it is very very long brach after meal brach. It, it is very long. Yes. I mean, but but once well, once you say it many many times, like uh, like you eat let let's say if you eat bread twice a day, right? So uh, you you said like after after a month or two months you would know it's almost by heart or by heart. Okay. okay. And it uh, like a uh, first time maybe it takes you like I don't know six minutes, seven minutes, but the next time it's like the next, after a few months, it would take you like three minutes to say it with, with normal, normal speed without any Russian. You understand? So buy this R scroll. And uh, if, you, if you get the R scroll, I also, I have R scroll David also. So we're going to tell you the, the pages. It would be easier to, to like communicate. You understand? Okay, so we stop here. Yeah, yeah. All right, so very nice. So tomorrow let's do 4 p.m. Since tomorrow is a holiday, we good at 4 p.m.? Uh, could you do it earlier or no? Yeah, yeah, I can do it earlier. What time, what time is good? Uh, let's think. I, I can do 10, 10 a.m. Mm, okay. Could you do three? Okay, let's do three. Okay. I have no problem. So uh, Israel, you good at 3 p.m. tomorrow? Uh, one hour before. What at 3, 3 p.m. tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yes. Okay, so uh, let's do early because uh, the holiday starts like uh, at six something. I don't know six six forty five. Uh, uh, so it's not not allowed to use electronics tomorrow. No, no, no. For for two days. So starting oh. tomorrow night, and until Wednesday, uh, like night. For two days straight, no electronics. Ah, uh, but it's, it's mandatory. Or yeah, yeah, it's 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 like Shabbos, Shabbos. Oh. But you are allowed to prepare food. Oh. Only if you leave uh, your uh, your uh, your fire. So what what people do? They they leave fire over for two days. Uh, ah, so it's so, like double double Shabbos. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. But, but the, the only difference is that you can prepare food. So okay. Shabbos, you cannot cook. But this, if you need to, to, to cook whatever chicken or whatever you need to cook, you're you allowed to cook. If you, you can carry, correct? You can carry. And you, you, you can carry whatever you need for, Shabbos, uh, for, for Yom Tov, even if there is no Eruv, basically. So whatever you, you need for Yom Tov, you're not allowed to carry. So that's uh, that's what it is. And we sleep outside and uh, I go check on my sukkah now. <laughs> my wife is uh, decorating. All right. So very nice. So Bizrat Hashem. So all the, all of the like after the holidays, uh, all of the classes will try to do from uh, from the sukkah. That's the proper way to do it. All right. Yes. So very nice. So good night until tomorrow. Bizrat Hashem, 3 p.m. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.
שיש... אני מברך, אני מברך את הרבנים, רגע, 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 אני מברך את הרבנים, הרב ירון ראובן, הרב אפרים כחלון, ראשי ארגון בעזרת השם, שהלכו בפיוניון, שעלו מעלה מעלה, יהיה להם ברכה והצלחה, הקדוש ברוך הוא ימלא בלשונות ליבם, לטובה ולברכה, שבכל מה שיפנו ישכילו ויצליחו, יזכו עוד לעשות כאלה וכאלה, הודיעו תורה לאדירה, אמן ואמן. אז אם בעזרת השם רשת בכל הארץ, הוא היהודי הזה, הוא היה מיליונר, סגר את כל הביזנס, אמר אני משקיע פה בעולמה של תורה. איפה הוא גר? בפלורידה. פלורידה, איפה זה פלורידה? באמריקה. כן, ליד. אנחנו שם עכשיו הולכים להקים קהילה ספרדית. קהילה ספרדית גדולה.